In this video, we are going to discuss a couple of questions on electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions of aniline. Now, in order to be able to solve these questions that we are going to discuss in this video, you should have had uh, read or you know seen the videos on the various substitution reactions like bromination of aniline, nitration of aniline and so on. Okay, So if you have not done that, I would recommend you to go back and watch those videos and then get back here and solve these questions with me. So let's look at the first question. It says, how can we bring about the following conversions? So we are converting nitrobenzene to 2,4,6 tribromoaniline and 2,4-bromoaniline. Alright, so you can see that we are performing bromination here. But my question is, do we first perform bromination and then convert nitro group to NH2? Or do we first convert nitro group to NH2 and then perform bromination? Because that's all the two steps that are involved in this reaction sequence. What do you think? Well, let's see. If we first perform bromination on nitrobenzene and then carry out reduction or convert nitro group to NH2, what do you think would happen? We know that NO2 is a strong electron withdrawing group and a strongly deactivating group. And that means it would direct the incoming electrophile Br plus to the meta position, correct? So we would get a meta bromo nitrobenzene and then we perform a reduction using SNHCl or FEHCl, we would get meta bromo aniline, correct? NO2 would get converted to NH2 and we get a bromine here at the meta position. But this is not the product that we want in either of these cases. Here we have a polybromination happening and here we have a mono substituted product, yes, but bromine is at the para position, not at the meta position. So we cannot perform bromination first and then reduce the nitro group to the NH2 group. Instead, we first need to convert nitrobenzene to aniline via reduction. We can do this by using reagents like FEHCl or SNHCl and when we do that we convert NO2 to NH2 and then subsequently perform bromination. Okay, So let's look at this reaction now. If we treat aniline with bromine that is Br2 in the presence of H2O, we would get polybromination or multi-substituted product. This is because amines are highly reactive towards electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. The NH2 group here has a lone pair of electron that can delocalize with the pi electrons of benzene ring and increase because this is an activating group, an electron donating group, it increases the electron density at the ortho and para positions. And that's what happens here. When we treat aniline with bromine in the presence of water, we get substitution at all of these places, at both ortho and para positions. But how are we able to get this monosubstitute product? To get this monosubstitute product, we would have to decrease the reactivity of this NH2 group. And we can do that by first performing acetylation. Yes, when we treat aniline with acetic anhydride in the presence of pyridine, we convert NH2 to NHCOCH3 and what is the advantage of this? Well, the advantage is that in this case, when we have NHCOCH3, the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom is in delocalization with the pi electrons of the C double bond group. So as a result, this lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen atom is now less available to be donated to the benzene ring. It is still an activating group. It would still increase electron density at ortho and para position. But because the lone pair of electrons is not completely available for this donation, the reactivity decreases here. And as a result, when we now perform a bromination by using the reagent Br2 in the presence of acetic acid, we would get the major product as the para substituted product. And finally, how do we get our aniline back? A simple hydrolysis step would do. So, using acidic hydrolysis, NaCOCH3 gets converted back to NH2 and we get our para substituted product here. So, you can see the difference between these two reactions. In this case, we are directly brominating aniline and because NH2 is a strongly activating group, substitution takes place at both the position, the ortho as well as the para positions giving us a polysubstituted product. Correct? But in this case, what we are doing is we are decreasing the reactivity. In other words, we are increasing the selectivity, correct? And for that, we first perform acetylation, convert NH2 to NHCOCH3, 
make the lone pair of electrons less available for donation onto a benzene ring and then perform bromination and finally hydrolysis to get our NH2 group back. We can extend the same thing to nitration. For example, here we have aniline and what products do we get in these cases? In the first case, we are directly nitrating aniline. In the second case, we are decreasing the reactivity of aniline by first performing acetylation and then nitration followed by hydrolysis. What products do we get here? I want you to pause the video, take a moment and try figuring out the answer. Extend the same concept that we just discussed in the previous case of bromination here as well and see if you can figure out the answer. Okay? Alright, let's see what answers we get here. So in the first case, when we directly nitrate aniline, here again because NH2 is a strongly activating group, we get ortho as well as para products here. But interestingly, we would also get a substantial amount of the meta product. Yes. And this is because you see the nitritic mixture used here, concentrated HNO3 plus concentrated H2SO4 is a highly acidic mixture. And in such an acidic medium, this NH2 gets protonated, correct? And it becomes, what does it become? It becomes NH3 plus. Now this NH3 plus is again a deactivating group. It would direct the incoming electrophile NO2 plus to the meta position. And this is why besides our ortho and para products, we get a substantial amount of the meta product. In fact, if you look at the ratio, it's quite interesting. We get about 2% of uh, ortho product, about 51% of para product and 47% of meta product, almost half. So needless to say that direct nitration of aniline is not a great method. And what about the second case? In this case, we are first performing acetylation, right? We're decreasing the reactivity of NH2 and the product we get here is NHCOCH3. Now the reactivity decreases. We are able to have a much more controlled reaction now. Then when we perform nitration using the same reaction mixture of concentrated HNO3 and H2SO4, we get a para product as a major product. And finally on hydrolysis, we would get the para substrate product that is para nitro aniline. So we can see from here that direct nitration of aniline gives us a mixture of products and protecting it, protecting the NH2 group or performing acetylation would give us the para isomer as a major product. Okay, so let's look at one more question now. In this question, we need to identify the products A and B formed here. Okay, so let's look at what is happening here. Again, we are starting with aniline. In the first case, we are performing a friedel crafts alkylation reaction, correct? In the second case, we're performing the same reaction, but on acetylated aniline. Okay, so what products are we getting here? Let's see. In the first case, we are performing a direct Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction. And do we get an ortho or a para product as a major product here? Well, we get nothing. Yes, aniline does not undergo Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction. NH2 is a strongly activating group. It can direct the incoming electrophile CS3 plus to ortho as well as para positions. It should ideally, but it doesn't happen here. And why is that? You see, the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom allows it to act as a Lewis base. And anhydrous AlCl3 is a strong Lewis acid. So what is basically happening here is that the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom interacts with the Lewis acid AlCl3 and forms a complex. And it is because of this complex formation that the reaction, the Friedel-Crafts reaction does not take place. But what do you think would happen if we protected it? You know, if we performed the standard acetylation and decrease the reactivity of NH2 here. So let's see what we get in that case. Okay. So first we are performing acetylation, NH2 becomes NHCOCH3 and then we are performing a Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction and whoa, look what we are getting here. We are getting a para substrate product. And why did this happen? So again, we have to do a compare and contrast. You see, in aniline, the nitrogen atom in NH2 has a lone pair of electron that is highly nucleophilic. It can interact with a Lewis acid like AlCl3 and form a stable complex. But in this compound, acetanilide, the nitrogen's lone pair of electron is only partially delocalized onto the benzene ring. It is also delocalizing with the pi electrons of the C double bond group, right? And this makes it much less nucleophilic. 
As a result, the nitrogen here does not strongly interact with AlCl3 but can still direct, is still activating enough to direct the incoming electrophile to the ortho and para positions, para being the major product. And because of all of these interplaying factors, we get the para product as a major product and on hydrolysis, we get our NH2 group back. So you can see that if we perform Friedel-Crafts reaction directly on aniline, we wouldn't get a desired product, but instead again, if we use this magic reagent of protecting the NH2 group or acetylating it and in that case we are able to control the reaction to obtain a more selective product. Alright folks, that's all for this video. I hope you now have a much better grasp on the various electrophilic substitution reactions of aniline.